Hi there. The news just broke in The Hollywood Reporter that prominent screenwriter Madsen Tomlin has been hired by HBO to write the third Game of Thrones prequel series on Aegon's Conquest, the Targaryen War of Conquest, which united the Seven Kingdoms and forged the Iron Throne, which will be set about a hundred years before the start of House of the Dragon Season 1, before all the time skips, and 300 years before Game of Thrones. This isn't a rumor. Same day, Tomlin himself then went to social media to confirm it's true. He is working on this pitch. So great, this is an active project now. Now there's three points I want to discuss in this video, and I'm going to follow this up with other videos rather than make one big one. First point is this isn't giant groundbreaking news because we'd already heard rumblings that HBO wanted to do an Aegon's Conquest project last year. Back oh, 10 months ago in April, April 2023, there was this big leak report in Variety that HBO is seriously discussing moving forward on an Aegon's Conquest show. But there wasn't a screenwriter attached yet, so we were treating it as a hypothetical. Though all the other pitches, when we found out about them, the screenwriter was attached in driving it. That the other three of the second batch were Duncan Egg, Nymeria, and Young Corliss. And when we found out about them, there was an actual screenwriter attached, so this just seemed as an idea they were tossing around the boardroom. What the announcement in Hollywood Reporter and by Tomlin himself means, what this announcement means today, is that it has officially graduated, is officially advanced from being an abstraction that maybe we're considering to this is now officially an active pitch project, which could potentially be greenlit. Because just like the other ones, uh, Duncan Egg, uh, Young Corliss, Nymeria, those had to advance through stages from pitch, which is there's this actual 100-page format that you use for a pitch document, to we ordered a pilot script, to we ordered a pilot episode, to then we greenlit it to series. Duncan Egg went through all those stages. The other ones, like Young Corliss, they said they had to shift to animation because it's too expensive. We'll see what happens with those. So nothing is guaranteed until they actually greenlight it, greenlight it, but... It went from being a project under consideration to an actual project. This is an active pitch, which he is working on. And, you know, the clickbaiters will tell you, oh, that means we're going to get this by fall. It's, guys, it takes two years, at least, from when you hire a writer who spends a year writing stuff to then a year filming it. We're not going to be seeing this until a while from now, but it's the next thing on the horizon. I think that they, long story short, I think they want Aegon's Conquest to follow House of the Dragon when it winds down after season four or five. I think they continue into the Regency era, but the actual story of the war would largely conclude after season four. So I think they're roughly aiming for this to be the new flagship after that, because you have to plan out a cinematic universe years in advance. That If House of the Dragon is the flagship for phase one, I think Aegon's Conquest would be the logical flagship show for Phase 2 a couple of years from now. That's fine. But that was point one, that just this is building on the report we had from Variety, just they have a writer attached now. Point two, the writer himself. The news about this specific writer, should we be excited about him? Who is Matson Tomlin? Actually, Matson Tomlin is very much one of the hot screenwriters of the moment in Hollywood. He is very much in demand for major franchise shows. Uh, he's going to be headlining the next Batman movie. Well, it turns out the Robert Pattinson Batman movies, uh, turns out he did uncredited work on the first movie. Well, you know, like they have someone punch up the script or maybe change a subplot. I'm not sure specifically what he did. But they liked his con contributions enough that they then handed the reins over to him for the sequel. They said, you will now be the writer on the sequel movie for the Batman thing. But it's not just, oh, he's the Batman writer. It's for a couple of years now, he's been an award-winning screenwriter. And he has the distinction of uh, having the most consecutive appearances on Hollywood's Blacklist. Now, the Blacklist is this thing that writers' associations do with unproduced scripts. 
that, you know, for whatever reason, through no fault of the screenwriter, sometimes movies don't get produced. Maybe the actor pulled out because another project was offering more money. Maybe the director had a scheduling conflict. But when someone writes a really good script, like Oscar-level script or action, you know, really, this could have been like a mainstream Star Wars thing or something on that scale, then goes unproduced. Screenwriter associations give these annual awards for the best unproduced screenplays of the year. So they don't just fade into memory, because this was real work, it wasn't the fault of the writer. Tomlin has been on that list more consecutive times than anyone. So he's won writing awards for his movie scripts, he's worked on a couple of other projects, and the most notable big one is within the past 12 months, they're handing the reins of the Batman writing over to him. So within the last 12 months, he became a very hot property, very in-demand screenwriter when someone really becomes, this is what everyone's hoping they can get Mattson and Tomlin or someone like that on their project. What this tells us is that HBO is treating this project very seriously. You know, it was our complaint after Game of Thrones, realizing these guys were just novelists who didn't know anything about screenwriting. TV or movie screenwriting, really. Benioff had done a few movie screenplays to mixed results. He wasn't really that. He said, I'm a novelist. I'm not more than a script guy. And everything we saw that he didn't know how screenwriting worked. And the, the thing N.K. Jemison said of just, why didn't we get the best for our project? Why do we have to settle for, oh, I hired my assistants? This is the best. That this is one of the big award-winning screenplay writers in Hollywood, routinely made the blacklist, and now we got him to headline Aegon's Conquest. So this is the double points here. It's not just, oh, yay, they advanced to having a screenwriter. They hired a very experienced, very in-demand quality screenwriter to headline this. This is exciting news. Just of the caliber of person they got for this. And rather than make an hour's worth of content as one video, I'm going to cut this up into smaller videos. But point three out of three to start off with here is, in case you've forgotten the initial report from Variety, it wasn't just that, oh, they're considering Aegon's Conquest, that leak had this really big news that they were considering starting it with a major theatrical movie, big budget theatrical movie. And the fact that they just hired a screenwriter who is more well known for being a movie writer than a TV showrunner, to me, is a strong indication that that is going to happen now. That I think they were on the fence about whether do we start this with a movie or not. Now I think they're all in for that, because they want this to be, this is our IP, intellectual property, this is our franchise. Disney has Marvel and Star Wars, well damn it, we have the world of Westeros, let's make that this multi-platform franchise across more than just TV, but into movies and other stuff like video games. But they want to get the media blitz of a theatrical release. It doesn't matter if, it's, if it was just a TV movie high budget. It's they want the publicity of putting it out in theaters, which I think is a good idea. I think the War of Conquest itself lends itself, it, it, it lends very well to being a movie. It's about three hours worth of story. It's mostly action. And then follow that with other seasons about everything that followed. And let me just go through this really quickly. When I gave my report last April, I explained when we say War of Conquest, Aegon's Conquest prequel, we're really talking about going through the Sons of the Dragon era. That's all one combined thing with Aegon and then the reigns of his sons, ending with the death of Magor and rise of his grandson Jaehaerys 50 years later. So this would continue into the Faith Militant Uprising. And it does you know, fall pretty neatly into a five-act structure because... First, you'd have the War of Conquest itself as Act 1. Act 2 would be the later reign of Aegon, and thus focus on the First Dornish War. Acts 3, 4, and 5 would be adapting the Sons of the Dragon novella, because Martin himself said, you know, this novella is an outline. If I ever rounded it out into fully narrativized books, it would th be three books. Three acts, three act breaks there, so... Season 3 would be the weak reign of Aenys, leading to the Faith Militant Uprising, his first son. Season 4 would be the rise of Magor, and Season 5 would be the fall of Magor. 
I can see them doing that. And then just looking at this five-act structure, you think maybe we could do the first one as a movie. There's some debate about, well, would they want to do all of them as movies? I don't think you could do the later seasons as movies. They're, they're not as focused, not quite as action-oriented. They're better suited to a longer format. But I think they are actually going forward with this hybrid model. And this is the top thing we'd ask them, like, are you seriously going forward with this as a movie? The fact they hired a major movie screenwriter to do it seems to confirm that. Though I myself would like them to slow down for season two as a TV season. Maybe not a ten episode season. Everyone's moving down to like eight episode or even six episode seasons at high budget. There isn't as much source material. But that's what we heard last April... They kind of want to do it as a movie. They're considering it. Now, they've hired a prominent, uh, very prominent, very much in demand movie screenplay writer. Now, after this, I'm going to have six or seven other videos breaking up other ripple effects and ramifications of this. So please follow me after the jump. This was just the introduction video.